we're gonna talk about, oh, flap. So if you ever come out and pre-flight your airplane and you find a flap down like this one, but this one is still up, that means you've broken a spring on this side. What happens when you have flap failures? We're gonna describe the systems and kind of give you an idea of what happens if something goes wrong. So stick around. This channel is about working on aircraft and flying those airplanes. So come take a seat and let's go for a flight. Yes, that's what we're going to talk about. We're talking about flaps. Uh, this was actually inspired by a friend of mine, uh, Scott, from the Great Michigan Bush Company. Um, he had a, an incident uh, a ways back, and I'm not quite sure um, I know what happened um, on climb out. Uh, his flap handle somehow retracted. I don't know if it just wasn't in the detent correctly or... Um, but uh, um, I'm going to reach out to him and maybe get some more information on uh, what happened with uh, his little incident. So we've got Scooter on a line here. He's going to hook up and... Uh... We're gonna ask him a few questions about Stenson's. So um, this this whole reason um, uh, for for you know um, doing this particular episode was uh, um, kind of a deep dive into the flaps on the Stenson. And uh, I remember watching one of your videos. I believe it was uh, you were practicing some uh, spot landings. And uh, shortly, it was like in the middle of that, uh, um, one of your um, you know, the flaps retracted automatically like just uh, and suddenly so yeah, it went, it went from full to zero right right so have you have you ever tested and, and actually flown and seen what what each flap setting does for for the actual speed of the aircraft or have you gone out yeah. and tested that i i mean i have it one of my videos and i would have to pull the data it's on my computer somewhere um but i did i i took a look at stall speeds um clean I took a look at stall speeds, clean stall speeds, flap one and stall speeds, flap two. And then I put on BGs and in similar conditions, similar weights, just a day later, did the same zero, one and two and looked at the stall speed differences uh, with the BGs. So I, I have a pretty good characteristic and a light. It was half tanks, just me. Uh, okay. Was the was the weight? So you know, we're looking what mine's fourteen hundred pounds empty. I'm one hundred and fifty, so that's fourteen, um, fifteen fifty plus twenty gallons of gas. Uh, sixteen fifty, uh, seventeen twenty. Right. Right, seventeen twenty ish somewhere yeah. in there. Is it is that like a typical uh, gross weight that you use when you're when you're flying? Uh, yeah, I try to keep an hour's worth of flying in if I'm going to be going into areas that I worry about climb performance, takeoff performance, and and uh, I don't ever worry about landing. It's always getting out. I can get in anywhere. Right. So that's, that's yeah, exactly. Kind of where I, that's kind of where I, uh, you know, I, I try to fly half tanks. If I have to go three quarters tanks, I will. I'll just be very cognizant of what's happening. And if the weather's cold, you know, it doesn't make as much of a difference on a hot summer day. I'm, I'm really paying attention to density altitude. You know, they, typically the aircraft is engineered, so the greatest lift is the on a wing is where the most downward deflection of the aileron is. Mm -hmm. So if you pull the flaps to that, you now have the greatest amount of lift with the least amount of drag. Correct. So you a higher lift setting, not as much drag, and that that would be conducive compared to the you know the the, the takeoff setting on the Stinson is pretty far back. It's it's it, there's a lot of deflection there. Okay. So that's something that was a little less would probably be, you know, useful. Right. And that's where my first setting is. It's, and it's, it's literally just a couple inches off the floor and it'll okay. match up. It'll match up the flaps with the ailerons. Yeah, did, have you ever had instances where you've had a, a like flap asymmetry? No, I never had flap asymmetry. I hear a lot about it, but I, I look at most of these systems and it would be difficult to get a flap asymmetry. I, I know, you know, in every flap system, I see there's a possibility, but that would be, um, not, uh, not as, you know, it, there's one point of failure where you get flap asymmetry. Right. Uh, especially, and especially on the, on the Stenson, because it's a, it's a single cat cable system with a spring return. 
Right. So the only way that you would be able to get one flap to return with the other one down is if you had a cable, one, one particular cable failure. And right, that's that the one point of failure. That, well, the, the one from where it, it comes from underneath the cabin around the ceiling and then splits off to the individual flaps. Right, so one of those would have to break. Yeah, yes, exactly. If you broke the cable from the flap handle to both flaps, you would just have both of them retract. Right. The cable. Um, or if you had a, um, if your the trigger in your um, flap handle had a, a worn spot in it, or that track had a worn spot in it, it wouldn't uh, catch in the in the notch, as it were. And then you would have what you so, similar to something you had um, with with your flaps retracting all the way up. So right, yeah, so. And, and and the other thing is with manual flap, even if you had a flap asymmetry problem, chances are it would happen during deployment while you were pulling it. That's when it has the most amount of force on it. Mm -hmm. So your automatic reaction would be to undo what you just did that was causing the incredible increase in roll rate. So yes. I think a manual flap system that Stinson has is, is a safer scenario because you would instinctively just undo the problem. And then you go in and do a no flap landing, everything would be okay. Um, but I think also too, just as like a standard procedure for me, I typically don't do anything with my flap settings when I'm in a turn. Moreover, personally, I haven't actually gone up and done testing for, you know, for what I typically fly my airplane at. I usually, I'm usually at full tanks all the time. Okay. And just myself. So I'm probably, um, yeah, I'm probably in the 18, 19 realm, somewhere around there. Okay. No, so the you know you you I get I got some questions for you about the flaps then. Okay. Um, do you find them effective in the in the Stinson at all? Um, well, my you know, and with my setup because I've got that that first notch, I always find that, um, you know, when when I start after a beam of the numbers and I get slowed down, if I if I'm at zero flaps. It tends to it tends to start running downhill really quickly, and I'll I'll pick up speed. Um, but I find that once I get that first notch in there, the airplane just sits. It it almost gets into a groove, if that makes any sense. I can definitely tell a difference if I'm not using flaps. Um, but as far as um, like other types of airplanes I've flown, um, you know, I'm, I've got a Cessna 182. And you go to flaps 40 on that thing and it's just, um, you're, you're just throwing power at it or cause you're going to sink like a rock. It's just, you know, the, um, having those, you know, those big barn doors out there, you know, I mean, obviously they're not, they're not big barn doors and they, um, but they, they, they get you down to that, you know, more comfortable, you know, um, rolling speed for landing in, in the way, you know, the way I see it. Okay. Yeah, I don't find them very effective. I mean, I I do notice that I I I can pull a couple of notches in, and when I pull, um, you know, two, you know, pull flaps, I get to beam the numbers, and I just pull all the flaps in. I get the flap speed, and then I just pull them all. Mm -hmm. Because it just seems like there's, that's the only place where I get a lot of effectiveness, and I still slip in almost all my landings if I'm coming over any obstacles at all. Oh really? I find, I, I find myself. I find myself in these massive slips where it's full rudder almost every landing. <laughs> like it's, right. Like a full flaps, full, full slip. And then it it's it's coming down at the angle that I want. I know like where you're at, you have issues with trees also, correct? I mean, you have obstacles on the end of the runways. Oh yeah. Um there's um so like um the 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 top one off my head, um if you know, if you ever want to do a search for it, it's Langley. Um, over on Whidbey Island, it's uh, Whiskey Ten, and if you're landing to the south, you're you have to slip. There's just no way. I mean, it's the there's not much of a threshold, and the trees are so close to the end of the runway that uh, if you're not doing a slip, you're going to be halfway down the runway because you're there's no way you're going to hit the beginning of the runway if you're not going to slip. So, and uh, um, I find. I find that too is I you know now that I think about it most a, a lot of the time find myself turning on the final 
and going, I'm a little, little too high. So I, I don't even turn the nose. I just kind of, I just level out the ailerons and then just put them back in again. And I just keep the nose going, you know, outside of the, of the turn and just kind of get it into where, you know, I'm in a, in a good position. So, um, but, uh, um, I usually don't have to slip too much. Usually I can, I can pull power back and, and, you know, get on the, on the, on the backside of the curve and, uh, kind of, you know, lose a lot of altitude that way. So, so when but, you say you're in the backside of the curve, how slow are you going? Um, I noticed, um, when I get down to about 60, that's when it starts, you know, the, you know, pull it all the way to idle, get it about 60 and it'll start coming down. It'll, it'll take a little while, but it'll, it'll start doing it. Yeah. I, okay. That's about it. Yeah. I, I probably long final at 60 and then at about a hundred feet, try to back it off to 55 ish. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, as I get lower, whatever it'll give me, you know, whatever I can get, however slow I can get it, but okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, similar speeds. I don't know how accurate our airspeed indicators are. My airspeed indicator always tells me I'm going faster than everyone around me. Um, um, okay. My like, <laughs> how fast do you show this? They'll say 115, and I'll show 125. <laughs> oh, really? And we'll be informed. So obviously, one of us is wrong, but I've consistently noticed I'm the fast one. So I know that my airspeed indicator reads fast. Now, do you have um, that the AV20? Does that give you the um, that gives you the the GPS speed? No, no, it gives it gives uh, just pedostatic speed. I got oh. an AV30 in mine also. Okay. And that and the actual airspeed indicator match up, so they they're within a knot or two. Depend and in slight differences every once in a while, but not really. Pretty, you know, within a knot or two. Okay. So, so I um so it's the pedostatic system. It it. Down low, I think it's fairly accurate, um, and I, you know, it VFR checks all right, I guess. So, right. I, I know I, I'll never do an IFR check on it. <laughs> so I never have to worry about an IFR check, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that's, I mean, that's when you when you started talking about flaps. That's the first thing that came to my mind was I I have a plane that I've always felt has ineffective flaps. It helps a little bit on takeoff. So that begs the question. How do your flaps affect the performance of the aircraft? Um, different flap settings uh, control how much more lift or the deficit of lift, if they're going up, um, do you really get? And uh, well, well, first of all, what are flaps and what do they do for the airplane? Flaps are on the inboard aft side of any kind of airplane, usually. And flaps are not a primary flight control, but they are what's considered a high lift device. And what I mean by that is flaps are designed to increase the either the cord angle or the overall size of the wing to help, uh, in the case of commercial airplanes, the Fowler flaps, they actually extend out and then down. So when they extend out, you get more surface area. It makes it easier for the wing to lift the airplane at slower speeds. And as the airplane increases in altitude and speed, you can retract those flaps and then the wing becomes more efficient. So that's how the theory of flaps work. Let's look at how they are designed on the Stenson and how they actually work have some examples of actual parts off of the Stenson 108. So we're going to take a look here at uh, all the different components. So the flaps are essentially a one cable system. They have an individual cable and a spring that returns it back to the full up position. That's why if you do the pre-flight and you find that condition where I probably broke a spring or snapped the bracket that's inside the wing. The way the system works is that you have a handle right here and this handle is pivoted at this point right here and this would be in the normal down position well flaps up handle down 
To actuate the flaps, you would have to push this button and then pull the handle. On the back here is where a cable ties through, routes up through the ceiling, and then splits off into both directions, left and right. That cable will pull on the flap because there is a quadrant right here and the spring attaches on this side and the cable goes off that direction. This is the control rod that goes to the flap. Here is what the spring looks like. And if you've ever wondered what controls the amount of elevator authority with the flaps up and down is this long, this really long, really long tube. And there's a little notch clamp. Normally in the flap down position, the control tube for the elevator is limited by the bottom end of this flap handle. When you pull the first notch, it rotates out of the way and the elevator push tube allows full travel. It's uh, an extra eight and a half degrees I believe ish. Eight? Eight degrees? So when we push on this button it allows a little detent right here in the bottom of the tube to get out of the way. That little detent locks into a track that has notches in it. And what I suspect would happen with Scooter is that that notch either is a little worn or wasn't really fully in that detent. Normally there's two notch positions. Uh, the first notch is the takeoff position and the second notch would be landing. However, I have ins the installed version that uh, allows me the just the first notch. Now, so I've heard people tell me that they don't have the very first notch of flap, which is just off the floor. Uh, they just have the two top flaps, so a lot of people don't even use flaps when they take off. So if you broke one of the cables going out to in an individual flap, you would have an asymmetric flap deployment. So theoretically, if you did break an individual flap cable, the flap that's going to deploy is going to create lift on that wing and subsequently push yaw into the downward wing. So we're doing 80 right now. Okay. I'll leave the power alone. Put the first notch in. Keep that nose down so I'm not climbing. And I think I only lose. I only lose about. I'm gonna have to go to knots because my G5 is a lot more. Uh, accurate. Well, I started off at about 71, 72. I'm trying to stay level here. And I see it get down to about 68. So with that first notch of flaps, I'm only losing a couple of knots. Go to the next notch, which is your normal takeoff. Staying level and I'm down right away I'm down to 68 69 or nose up now I'm down to 65 64 and the last notch Now the landing configuration all the way down, 
I'm at 61. So from flaps up to flaps down, I'm only losing 10 miles an hour. So I can, can definitively say that these flaps are not that effective. All right, so we're gonna nose down, take the flaps out, get some speed up, power up. Boy, they got some snow over here at uh, Warren Beach. Must not feel very warm around there. Let's uh, make sure we're not gonna turn into anybody. This is 9185 uniform, same turn, or left down, right, 3 4 left. Uh, that was a much better turn. Much better turn. That's uh, 6 Fox, Now I'm not some rich and famous YouTuber asking you to like and subscribe to this channel. I'm an aviator asking you to like and subscribe to this channel. Because that's the way YouTube works. If you don't click those buttons, YouTube doesn't know that you want to see more aviation content and won't show you more. But if you don't like what you've seen, please leave me a nasty comment down below. Because that's the way the internet works. May all your flying be good flying. <laughs>